y'all, this is your discussion of photosynthesis um, and the Calvin cycle. So as we've talked about up to this point, we've talked about like uh, cellular respiration would be, which would be the oxidation of our carbohydrate, our sugar to form CO2 and water. And this is an example of where, so this is our catabolism of glycolysis and the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain. But if we look at the reaction for photosynthesis, we see that it's really the opposite, so the reverse. So we have CO2 going to a sugar, so this would be our anabolism, and water turning into O2. And note that here we're also dealing with an electron transport because we're oxidizing. Here we're reducing our oxygen to form water. Here we're oxidizing our water to form O2. All right, so if we look at the basics of our electron transport chain, regardless of what type of um, process we're looking at that produces the electrons, we still have something, and here are the descriptions of what chemo-organo, chemo-letho, and photo I'll refer to, but they're all giving away electrons to a protein system which pumps protons across the gradient and we have a mobile electron carrier and these electrons ultimately go to a terminal electron acceptor. Okay, um, If it's aerobic, it's going to be oxygen. If it's not, if it's anaerobic, this terminal electron acceptor is not oxygen. All right, so remember, that's our big idea from electron transport chain. And the whole idea behind this is to create the proton mode of force that powers some molecular machines. So for cellular respiration, that would be ATP synthase. Um, it could be a flagella or an efflux pump. All right, so. For cellular respiration, we talked about the chemo-organotrophy. So chemo being chemical, organic, or an organic chemical that provides our electrons, and it's under aerobic conditions, so oxygen is our acceptor. For photosynthesis, we are dealing with phototrophy. And so for this, we're in an aerobic environment, so we have oxygen, okay? And so what we're going to do here is what's providing our electrons are going to be our water, which means that we have to have some sort of energy to be able to split this water to give off those electrons. We'll talk about how that happens here in a few seconds. But we have our protein, we have our electron carrier, we have another protein, and here, we end with NADPH. Remember, NADPH is what we use through anaerobic pro or anabolic processes. NADH we get and use through catabolic. NADPH is what we're using for anabolic. So we're building things. So we're building our carbohydrate. Um, here. This is referred to as our light dependent reactions within photosynthesis and PS stands for photosystem. Photo meaning light. So where we're getting our energy here is from light. All right, so what is photosynthesis? This is the overall formation of carbohydrates. Um, primarily your sucrose and starch. Remember that our um, carbohydrates that are being formed are going to be our starches. Um, and this is going to happen in the chloroplast. So the big difference here is that in, for our chemo um, organotrophy, or what we've talked about so far from our electron transport chain through cellular respiration, that occurs in the mitochondria. Photosynthesis happens in the chloroplast. And here's an example of a chloroplast. 
it should look similar to our mitochondria. Um, and chlorophylls, which are molecules inside of our uh, chloroplast, are what are going to capture that light energy, which allows us to release our electrons, um, generate high energy electrons that are able to reduce other molecules. All right, so where does this all happening? So within our chloroplasts, we have these things that are called thylakoids, okay? Um, and thylakoid membranes. And this is the membrane where everything's occurring. So this is where we're going to harvest our light using proteins. We have our reaction centers and we have electron transport. So um, it does not contain our electron transport chain or um, our ATP synthase. Okay. Um, so how are these reactions actually taking place? If you've ever heard of a Z scheme, this is the reactions that are occurring in our photosynthesis light reactions. So essentially light, these are the big ideas for our light reactions. Where light's used to oxidize two water molecules to generate a molecule of O2 for every four electrons sent through the chain. So if we think about this, um, we need to form O2. So conservation of matter is still a thing that we have to worry about. So O2 has two oxygens associated with it. So we have to get those two oxygens from two waters. And in that process, we're going to lose two electrons from each of those waters. Okay. Um, let's see. Note also that this process is going to allow us to form NADPH that we can use later on. And this is going to create a proton gradient that is again going to be used to form ATP, just like we saw in cellular respiration. All right, so how are we going to get light energy into chemical energy? Well, we have light coming in and we have photoreceptor molecules that are going to absorb this light, such as chlorophyll. Okay, so that light is a form of energy. So our ground state electrons here, light comes in, provides energy to excite one of those electrons. And so we have one electron in our ground state and one electron gets excited into its excited state. Now, we also have acceptor molecules. Now, what's going to happen is that this excited molecule could go back down into its ground state, and that releases energy in the form of heat, but it could get accepted by the acceptor molecule. When this happens, this donation molecule, this donator molecule, loses an electron. So in that case, it's going to become positive and our acceptor molecule has accepted an electron and so it has now becomes negative. This whole idea is referred to as resonance energy transfer. And all of this happens at the reaction center of our photosystem one. All right, so let's talk more about this acceptor molecule, which would be our chlorophyll. Um, so if we look at that, it has a heme group associated with it, except for instead of iron being in the center, we're dealing with magnesium. And so remember, these conjugated pi systems allow for lots of electrons to flow around here in this porphyrin. Um, so if we look at the light that's absorbed in this, we can see that it absorbs in the purple and the blue and also in the red and the orange. So if it absorbs these colors, these wavelengths of light, and that means that it's going to release or reflect green and yellow. And so this is where we get the green color of our plants.
We also have these pigment molecules that allow for the light to be able to get transferred to that reaction center. So the green are going to be our chlorophyll, which we just looked at, which would be our porphyrin with the magnesium in the center. And these white places are just regular proteins and the pink are going to be our carotenoid molecules. So carotenoids are what give carrots their orange color or all of our um, yellow or red peppers. We also see various types of carotenoids and various types of um, accessory pigments. And so what happens is in the fall, our chlorophyll molecules stop being produced and our other pigments are able to pick up those electrons and that's what allows us to see the beautiful colors we see in the fall. But note with our accessory pigments, a lot of the molecules have this conjugated pi system that allows for the transfer of electrons over um, a certain distance. All right, so how do we get water to split and get those four electrons from it? So here, all you, I am not going to ask you to write or draw this. You just need to know that a magnesium or manganese center a whole bunch of metals are associated with this, right? Just like we saw our iron sulfur clusters in cellular respiration. Here we're dealing with manganese and calcium. And you can just see how the electrons are being transferred from one molecule of, of water um, to form a double bonded oxygen. And then those electrons from the other oxygen and water come over to create that bond and we lose electrons along the way. And so that's how our water gets split into, um, two molecules of water get split into one oxygen. All right, so if we look at the chemiosmotic coupling between our Z scheme and our ATP synthase, it works in a similar fashion as um, the ATP synthase in our mitochondria and bacteria. However, we see a couple primary differences. First of all, the membrane orientation is reversed. So it's going to go, instead of going into the matrix, like what we saw in um, cellular respiration, it's going to go out, it being the ATP, is going to be formed out in the stroma. So ATP, well, that's, and the stroma space is where all of our um, anabolic processes are going to be occurring. And this is also where NADPH is going to be used to allow us to be able to do our Kelvin cycle. So herbicides are actually, those are designed to block um, and interfere with photosystems one and two. And so that's what causes, if we don't have those photosystems one and two, then that's what's going to um, not allow us to create ATP for our other cellular processes. Note that even though plants have, some plants have chlor chlorophyll, all plants, all living um cells are going to have um, cellular respiration. All right, I will give another quick video on the Calvin cycle. Um, I will see you guys in a second.